Hey there, drone fans. Rick here again from Drone Valley. In today's clip, I'd like to answer a question we get an awful lot on the channel, which has to do with caching maps for offline use when you know you're heading to an area with no internet connectivity. Now, there seems to be a ton of confusion about how you get those maps and how you can use those maps when you finally arrive on site to fly for the day. And I'm here to tell you that it's not your fault. There's been a ton of changes in the way those maps are retrieved, how they're used by the DJI Go 4 application. The process is different on Android than it is for Apple. And rather than me sit here and try and explain the 8 million reasons that the process didn't work for you on a particular day, I'd rather instead explain how to do the process as of today and give you some hints on maybe ways of improving the chances of that map actually being there when you get on site. Now you're probably wondering why I have all these displays on the table in front of me, and I wanted to explain that if you're flying something that's Android-based, there's one procedure that pretty much works for all the Android products, and there's a different one for Apple, and I'll go through both of those in front of you. Now what I've got here is my Crystal Sky mounted to a controller from my Inspire 2, Android-based product. I've got the brand new DJI Smart Controller, again, another Android product. I use this NVIDIA tablet, which is Android-based as well, when I'm using some of my smaller quads, a great little tablet to use for Android. So those three are pretty much the same procedure. Now with Apple, it's a different procedure. I use an iPad Mini 4 here that has no cellular connection at all, and I use my new iPhone, which does have cellular connection. But these four guys, without connecting to a Wi-Fi network, I have no way of touching the internet, so these have to have maps cached before I leave for the day. And what I'm going to do is show you how to get those maps, and again, give you some suggestions to ensure that you have those maps available to you when you get on site. Now one thing I will tell you is that in the beginning of this, I can't just explain how to do it. That's just not in my nature, because I'm a nerd, and I want to understand what's going on behind the scenes, and I want you to understand a little bit more about all the mechanics behind it and the technology behind it. So this first couple of minutes, I'm going to explain some basic concepts of how this works, how those maps are cached, how the application gets at them. If you don't care about that stuff, because a lot of you guys come to the channel and say, Rick, your clips are too long. We don't need you here talking about technology and all the nerdy stuff. Just get to the details. So down below, I put a time code that'll take you right to the procedure for Apple, and a second one will take you right to the procedure for the Android products. But I hope you hang around because, again, I'm a nerd and this stuff really excites me. And if you're flying these kind of technologies, you're going to want to know what's going behind the scenes because I guarantee you they're going to change it again in a month or two. And you'll probably understand better if you listen to this nerdy stuff. So let me get into that. And again, I appreciate you guys watching. I hope you're getting value out of these because I love flying. And when I figure something out like this, I love sitting down and putting a clip together to help you guys out because I know a lot of people are starting to fly now with the spring coming and understanding how to cache those maps and actually get at them when you're out in the field. It's a big benefit to a lot of flyers. So stay tuned and we'll start with the nerdy stuff, then we'll get into the process. In this first section, I wanted to take a minute and explain what happens when you're actually caching these maps, because quite honestly, this is hands down my favorite part of the clip when I put these together, but it's important for you guys as well, because even though you may not be nerdy, you need to understand exactly what you're doing to improve the chances of those maps being there when you actually show up on location. So I thought we'd start with a definition of the word cache, because even though we throw that around in conversation a lot, I'm not sure many people understand what it is, but inside your tablet or your phone, there's a special section of temporary storage for relevant information to a particular program that's extremely fast access. So it's a given amount of space inside your phone or your tablet where these maps are being stored or cached for the program to get at it very quickly. Because when you think about it, the maps have a tremendous amount of detail that the program needs to access very fast because it's got to draw this beautiful map as you're flying. That smoothness of drawing that map is important. So you having the fast access really makes that possible. The map data you cache to your device is stored in a type of memory called RAM, which stands for Random Access Memory, and that's a solid state memory that's specifically designed for incredibly fast reads and writes. Now the challenge is RAM comes in two flavors, persistent and non-persistent. And the difference between them is that persistent memory will hang on to the data you park there even if you power off the device. Non-persistent means if you power down the device, or in some cases actually shut down the application, that memory is lost, it's been cleaned out, and that map data is gone for good. Now what makes this incredibly challenging is that the way Android stores the maps is different than the way Apple stores the maps. So on the Android side, they actually download the maps to persistent memory, then move them into non-persistent cache for use when you have the application up and running. But if you shut down the application or you power down the phone on an Android device, those maps are still there because they're loaded into the persistent memory and they'll be available for use next time. With Apple, it's only loaded into non-persistent memory, so it loads directly into the cache. So with Apple, unfortunately, if you power down the device or if you shut down the application, 
you're probably going to lose that map data. So it's really important if you're using an Apple device that you not power down your phone or your tablet before you get to your location to fly. I would even further suggest that you not shut down the application itself. Make sure the DJI GO 4 application is up and running from the point where you cache those maps to the point where you're out there trying to fly. Now, even that's not a guarantee on the Apple side because the iOS, the operating system itself, it's constantly looking at how cache is being used. And that's a good thing because it wants to use that cache efficiently. Unfortunately, it's a bad thing for the application because if you've cached that data and don't go out and fly for a little while, other applications that are running in the background may need to use cache and the iOS is going to look at that cache and say, hey, DJI GO 4 hasn't touched it in a couple of hours. We'll flush that and let the other application use it. So it does kind of a housekeeping procedure in the background that may inadvertently get rid of those maps for you. So it is a bit of a challenge, but unfortunately you have no control over that whatsoever. So my strong suggestion on the Apple side is cache the maps, don't turn off the device, don't shut down the application, and try and cache those maps as close to when you're going to go out there and fly that location as possible. That'll give you the best chance of retaining those maps. The good news is on the Android side of the house, since you've actually downloaded those maps to persistent memory, and then they get moved into non-persistent cache when you're flying, they're always gonna be there when you go out next time. The challenge on the Android side of the house is there's a limited amount of space that you can download those maps to, and depending on how deep a focus you get on those maps, in other words, how much detail are built into the maps, it limits the number of maps you can actually load to persistent memory. Now my rule of thumb is, if I've got really good detail, very granular detail, where I've zeroed in down to the street level, I don't load more of four, four or five maps maximum that I download at one time. If I'm pretty high level uh, view of the place, I may go as high as eight, but you'll find that if you try to load more maps, you'll either get an error or you'll get it pretending to download, but then when you try to use the map, you'll find there's corruption there and you can't use the map. So on the Android side, I'd keep it to about five maps any given time. On the Apple side, keep the application running, keep the device powered on, and you should be good. That'll give you the best chance possible to use it when you get out there in the field. The other challenge is that DJI changed the map provider they're using to provide the data that draws this map. Originally, they used a company called Here, and when they were using that company, it was easy for you to download an entire region. So on Android, you could actually go in and download large chunks of the United States in one shot. They would always be on your device, make it very easy for you to pull those up offline. They've now changed to a new company called Mapbox. Now, there are advantages to Mapbox over what Here was doing. Here had some issues with their servers being intermittent. So if you're out in the field and you're trying to fly even over Wi-Fi or a cellular connection off of here, it took a long time to draw the maps and a lot of times they would be very laggy. The map box stuff, if you're on an internet connection, is much more accurate and it's much faster to actually draw the maps. The challenge is the way you grab the data in the old system is different than the way you grab the data in the new system. Now, just to give you a, a base level of when this changed, on the DJI GO 4 application, if you're running 4.1.15, that's the last iteration of that firmware that used the here data. So if you want to go back to that old procedure, you've got to down rev your firmware to go back to 4115. I'm going to assume that everybody's been updating their firmware over the last couple of years because the change from 4115 to the newer version happened back in November of 2017. So if you're running on firmware that's two years old, you're missing a whole lot of cool features. So I'd recommend you move to that newer versions of firmware, which are even later than the 4118. But that was the first one that actually had the Mapbox data. And because of that, that's what I'm going to focus on in this clip. I'm going to talk about the newer versions of firmware and how we actually get at it. The last wrinkle I wanted to mention was that there are actually two different procedures depending on the device you're using. So if you're using an Apple device, you're going to actually cache that map, as I mentioned, in non-persistent storage, but you can get better granularity out of it. And I'll show you how to do that in a minute. If you're using an Android device, you're not actually caching the map, you're downloading the map, and it's going to stay persistent on your device. Now that may seem like a better system to use, but the challenge there is that there's a limited amount of that persistent memory that DJI can use for storing those maps. So it is better because it'll be there for a longer period of time for you. It doesn't disappear when you power off the device or shut down the application, but you can't get as big a chunk of area to fly. It's got a fairly limited area to fly, but it still works fine. Both of these procedures are different, but they end up with the same result on whatever device you're using. A few things to keep in mind before you start this procedure on an Apple device, you're going to want to cache these maps when you're on a strong internet connection, and you're going to want to cache them as close as you can to when you're going to go out and fly that location. So my recommendation is, if you get up on a Saturday morning and you know you're going to go fly at a lake near you, start caching those maps before you go out to fly, and that way you'll have the latest versions. 
I also recommend you cache more than you think you need. So for example, if there's a particular point of interest that you're going to be flying near, I would recommend going a little to the left, a little above, a little below, and a little to the right. So you've got a little more map than you need in case you decide to fly a little bit further along the edge of that lake or that forest that you happen to be flying over. You want to make sure that you also cache at various levels of zoom. And what I mean by that is the maps have different resolutions high up versus low down at the street level. So start at the very high level, like a state level, and then zero in a little bit, maybe more on a county level. Then you'll get down to a street level. Each of those are bringing different data into that database that's going to be cached on the device. And you'll want to have that different levels of uh, clarity, if you will, when you're flying in that area to make sure that you can see everything you need to see. Two really important things, don't power off the device and don't shut down the application. So when it finished the caching, get in the car, head to the location and go fly and have some fun. The last thing I'll mention is before you leave home, check those maps. And what I typically do is I'll turn off Wi-Fi in the device, I'll open up the DJI GO 4 application and I'll move that map to where I'm going to be flying that day just to see the level of detail that's included. To start this procedure on an Apple device, you'll open up the DJI GO 4 application to the main screen. In the upper right hand corner you'll see the three dots. If you tap those three dots, it'll bring up the main general settings page. And about midway down that page, you'll see a line item that says cache map in the background. You want to make sure you turn that on. Once that's turned on, all the maps you're going to view at that point are going to be cached locally on your device. Once the application is finished loading, you can tap the small map in the lower right hand corner to bring it up to full screen view. Then you'll want to navigate to a place that you might be flying that afternoon. So let's say I'm heading down to Long Beach Island and I want to fly in ship bottom. I'll zoom in on that area. Now you can see it takes a couple of seconds for the map to catch up. You don't want to rush this. Let it take its time, draw in all those details because everything you see here is being cached to the device you're bringing along. Now watch also when I pull back how parts of the map are dark green, light green. That's because it hasn't been cached yet. This is a very close view of the streets and it's taken a couple of seconds because there's a lot of detail in there. Now I'll move a little bit to the left and I'll zoom in very tight and you'll see what will happen. I'll actually zoom in really, really close and you can see that it's taken a little bit longer to actually draw in these details because there's a lot of information there that it has to catch up on. But once you see those details, they're locked into your cache at that point. Now I've pulled back a little further. It's drawn in those details. And pretty much you're going to want to scan around the area you want to fly to give you as much information as possible about that particular area because when you finish this, the only details you'll have in that map are the ones that you've actually looked at here when you're caching that data. Once you disconnect from the internet, that's all you're going to be bringing with you. And to prove that point, here's a map I created earlier today by jumping around a particular region. You can see that some of the quadrants are fully cached, others are blank, and that's because I didn't stay in that quadrant long enough for all the data to actually cache on the device. Now what I've done here is actually turned off Wi-Fi, so what you're looking at when I pull back are the quadrants that actually have been cached on the device. Now it'll be okay if I fly within one of those quadrants, I'll have all the map details I need, but if I hit the edge of that quadrant, the map disappears. So it's really important that you take your time and let the map settle in and capture all the details you'll need for flying later on. Here are a few things to keep in mind if you're using an Android device. You'll want to have a strong internet connection to actually download these maps because it'll not only make that download go faster, but it'll ensure you get the complete file without corruption. Watch the progress as the file is downloading, and when it's finished, you'll get a message down the bottom saying it was downloaded successfully. If it didn't download completely, you'll get a message that tells you that as well. And if that happens to you, you'll want to go back out and get into the menu again and check the files that you have. And the one that didn't download completely, make sure you delete that because it will take up space even though you won't be able to use it. I would suggest starting your downloads with the area you know you're going to fly. Get that map first. Then once that's successfully downloaded, move a little to the right, a little to the left, a little above, and a little below. You want to expand that area so you get some of the surrounding grids as well. In case you decide to find something interesting at the end of that lake, you don't want to run out of map at that point. Once you save these files, you're going to save them individually. Again, depending on the resolution of how close you got to the ground and how much detail is in the map, I probably wouldn't extend it beyond five or six maybe at the most different individual maps for any particular day I'm flying. If you get up over eight, even though it seems like they're going to download, you get contention for that amount of persistent memory that's been set aside for these files, and you could have issues using those files in the field. You can power off the device, because all that'll do is clear the cache, but I like to keep it powered up just to make sure everything is consistent, because even though the application will power back up and find those maps in that persistent memory, for me, I've just had better luck 
leaving both the application running and the device running until I'm done flying for the day. The last thing I'll recommend is that you check those maps before you leave your home. Very easy to do, just turn off Wi-Fi, open up the DJI Go 4 application, and then scroll that map to the area you think you're going to be flying to see if you've actually got that detail. When using an Android device, you're going to start at the main menu of the DJI Go 4 application. On the upper right hand corner, you'll notice three dashes. If you tap those dashes, it brings up a submenu. Right at the top, you'll see a listing for offline map. If you tap that, it'll bring up the functionality that'll allow you to actually grab the maps for the area you're going to be flying. It brings up a little box. Now that box is what I'm going to capture. So let me navigate back down to Long Beach Island like I did on the last example. And I'll try and center this thing around ship bottom. Uh, let's see. All right. So I'm getting closer. Good. Now let me zoom in a little bit. Now there's the same area that I captured with the Apple Maps. But you notice the detail's not as great on this one. It's really just a street level view. But once I'm happy where it's positioned, I'll zoom in a little closer. Let's say I've got to film a house there. Once I'm happy with that, I'll hit the download button and then it'll ask me to name it. So we'll just call this something simple like Shore. Let me type in that. This is important because it allows you to identify that file later on so you can review the map and you can also delete it if you have to. So once I'm happy with that, I'll just hit Done and it'll start the download. Now I have a fast connection so this should happen pretty quickly. It's a small file, about 50, 60 megabytes. It's under 100 megabytes so you can see it's happening very quickly. Now once this one downloads, I'm going to move that box around a little bit to capture two other locations. Let's pretend I've got two more houses I want to film. All right, so that one's done. I don't know if you saw it, but at the bottom of that screen it had a completed download successfully. So let's take another one. Let's call this Shore 2. And again, I'll download this map. And I want to do a couple of these to show you how you can check them later. Okay, so Shore 2, we're good. Again, it's doing a very quick download, small file. Now watch at the bottom over the Cancel button. And you'll see it come up with that message that you got the file completely. Region downloaded successfully. All right, let's pick a third spot a little further down along the shore there. Maybe it's a big house on the actual ocean. And I'll call this Shore 3. I can type this in real quick. Then I'll hit the download button. That'll be the third region we've grabbed. Now I try to keep it under five regions or six regions if I'm out flying for the day. And I'll delete ones that I've already flown in. So once this finishes, I'll show you how to check these. All right, we're all set there. Now in the upper right hand corner, you see that little map up there. That's what you're gonna to wanna to tap. And when you do that, it'll bring up the regions you've saved already. So there's Shore, Shore 2, and Shore 3. Now if I wanna take a look at one of those, I'll tap Shore 3 and it shows me exactly the map it's got. If I wanna delete it, I hold my finger over it and I hit the delete button and it'll actually delete the map. Okay, that's pretty much all I had for this clip. So hopefully you found that helpful. If you have any questions about anything I've covered, drop them in the comments below and I promise to get back to you as quickly as possible. As I said in the beginning of the clip, I love doing these kind of clips because I fly a lot and I know you guys fly a lot. I get frustrated by something, I figure it out, I put a clip together to explain what I figured out so you guys can fly a little bit safer and have a lot more fun in the field. So I appreciate you watching. I've been blown away by the increase in subscribers over the last couple of months. I'm, I'm flattered by the fact that people have found the channel and really enjoy the content. So if you haven't subscribed yet, please hit that subscribe button down there in the corner and uh, join the Drone Valley family. We'd love to have you as a subscriber because I have a ton more content coming on quads and drones and emerging technology that you're not going to want to miss. So thanks again for watching today and until next time, happy flying. Mm -hmm.